the Lord in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, that we live in a country where we're free, Lord. Where our founding fathers recognized that true liberty and true, true freedom can come from no man or no power other than the powerful God that you are. So we ask tonight for your blessing upon our country, Lord. We ask, Lord, that our leaders would turn back to the wisdom that our founding fathers had when they looked to you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would be with our servicemen and women here and around the world, Lord, who defend us so nobly, Lord. Watch over them. Keep them safe, please, Lord. And please, we ask, Lord, Give us leaders that would lead this country back to the country that it used to be. We ask this in Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome um, County Attorney Dennis Ho to be with us tonight. Senator Sanborn, Captain Kevin with us. Tony Howe from Town, Chair of Gosstown Republican Committee, back here. Uh, Mark Vincent. Uh, Gopher County Chair, uh, Wesson Mount um, Vernon Chair, oh, I think that's it, I think that's it. Thank you for coming, we appreciate having you here. And at the time, I think it was the same day, the day after I wrote to Chairman Horn, that not only did Bill lose, but the Republican Party lost. We were very discouraged. We worked very hard in this town to get Bill elected, uh, all of our representative selected. And uh, it was disheartening. So she made a promise to me, and we're finally getting her here. <laughs> she said, I will come and talk to your committee. I will come and talk to and soothe the calm, calm the water, so to speak. So here she is. She's been elected the second time as chairman of New Hampshire GOP, Jennifer Horn. that you're still letting me in the door. Uh, it's great to see everybody, it really is. And I'm actually kind of glad in retrospect that a little bit of time has passed because it's given us all a chance to kind of find our way forward a little bit, figure out how this, you know, how things are going to work out. I got to tell you, I, usually this is something I say near the end of my speech. I'm going to say it right at the beginning because I think it goes to the heart of what some of you are concerned about. And that is that the Republican Party is strong. We have a strong, vibrant Republican Party because the strength of our party is not measured by the people that you elect and send to Concord or to Washington. The strength of our party is measured by all of you, truly. That's not just you know something I throw out to make you all feel good. You're the party. There are thousands of you. There are only a few of them. And if they don't meet your expectations, you get to ship them out and send somebody else up there in their place. And in New Hampshire, the great thing is it's every two years. It's not like you're you're stuck with somebody longer than you really want to be. And I tell you that our party is strong because I have been all over the state. And not just since that election, but over two years now, I have been all over the state to every county committee more than once, to many of our town committees. And the turnout at our meetings is growing in most cases. And as we get into this presidential primary, People are getting more energized, more interested, more engaged in what's going on, more concerned and more, I think the most important thing, more aware of the impact they can have as an individual. And certainly even more so as an individual becomes part of this group of people who share the same concerns. Our party is strong. We stand for the right things. And we fight for principles that lift up the entire community. And that's what's extraordinary, in my opinion, about Republicanism. It's why I'm a Republican. Because the, all of the things that Senator Sandborn was talking about, those Republican principles, limited government, limited taxation, unlimited opportunity, when we take those principles that we all talk about and debate amongst ourselves and turn them into policy, the entire community is lifted up. And even though sometimes the path is difficult or the process is messy, we are seeing Republican principles advance out of Concord. And we're very slowly starting to see them advance out of Washington. But if you give up the fight, it all comes to an end. It really is on you. It really is on your shoulders. It, it, that's, that's the responsibility we have as members of our community, and certainly as members of the Republican community. We're the ones who have to fight and stand together and make sure that when we're not being heard, that we get louder and louder and louder. That
that's how we keep this whole thing going. I'm really pleased with a lot of things that I've seen happening uh, over the last couple of months. You know, again, uh, Tony, uh, uh, where'd you go, Tony? You're hiding back there. Jeez. The, um, uh, we, had a t we had a rough start to this session. There's no question about it. And uh, what I've really been impressed by, and it took some time, no, no, and it's going to take a lot more time, is watching, you know, without wanting to comment or kind of revisit things that have happened in the past, as I've watched the 200 in 36 or 237 Republican state reps. That's how many we have there. We went from just a few hundred and I don't know how many to over 235 state reps there. We had a huge win in the House. They're doing their job. And little by little, they're coming together and they're working together to advance the principles and the legislation that's important to all of you. All of those folks who are not leadership, who are not the speaker, who are not the majority leader, who are not the chairman of the committees, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of them there. They're working so hard, and they are working together, and they're standing up for what they think is right. You know, and I, I want to give credit to Representative Sanborn. Um, you know, she took, she made a tough decision last week. It's not always easy, but she stood up and she did what she thought was right. And whether it means standing up to Republicans, standing up to Democrats, standing up to folks outside the House who might not understand what's going on, that's the kind of leadership we need. People are going to stand up and continue to articulate and advance the, the principles and the, the promises that they made in their campaigns. And I said it at the time when it happened. Any Republican that stands up and does what he or she believes is right because they made a promise to the people who elected them, I mean, it's really hard for me to give them a hard time for that, isn't it? You know, that's what they're supposed to do. That's what this is all about. So we move the process forward. All I'm going to say about the budget is that this is one step, and there's a, it's a long way to go. It's a process. The Senate's going to take it, and it's going to go into committee uh, with both. And the one thing that I am absolutely certain of is that when the process is finished, Republican leadership in the House and Senate are going to come together and give New Hampshire a responsible, balanced budget with no new taxes, just like we did, have done in the past, and just like we're going to do this time around. And it's going to be another opportunity for us to highlight the difference between Republican leadership and Maggie Hassan leadership. It is the second time in a row that she has been <coughs> completely incapable of doing the single most you know, basic responsibility for a job, and that's balancing the budget. She was incapable of it two years ago. She's proven she's incapable of it now. And she's going to come forward in a couple months and start asking you to send her to the US Senate. <laughs> Imagine the hubris of such a thing. Uh, incapable of doing this job, so here, let me go and try another one. Let me go try something else. Um, but you know, as we move forward, there's a lot of exciting things going on. If you haven't heard about the First in the Nation Summit uh, taking place on April 17th and 18th, please get to the, the NHGOP.org website and find out about it now. It's two days of really engaging, exciting Republican camaraderie, Republican principle, and Republican candidates all coming forward to kind of share their vision of what they think the future of our nation should be. And it's a great chance for us to kick off the most important job that we have in the political process as granted staters, as you know, voters of the first of the nation primary. And that it's our job we, to start this process for the nation, to start vetting these candidates. Because our state is so small, you have an opportunity that the vast majority of voters in our country don't have and will never have. These candidates will come and sit in your living room and have coffee with you if that's what it takes to win your vote. Ask them the questions. Really, you know, get into it with them. Make them answer. Draw out of them the things that are important to you. Let's get to know them as well as we can. And the, you know, the, the cameras of the world are going to be on us as we do it, which means we're giving the opportunity for the rest of the nation to get to know these people as well as we go through what is going to be a really important process. Andy talked about the fact that you know all these great things that we're going to talk about, all these terrific candidates we have. We have the broadest most qualified list of Republican candidates we have seen maybe in my lifetime. They represent the full spectrum of the Republican Party, and it's exciting to see the energy and the interest that's coming as a result of that. And on the other side, what are they talking about? Just like you said, they're talking about Hillary. You know what? We're not going to just talk about Hillary. We're going to talk about Hillary and what really happened in Benghazi. And we're going to talk about Hillary and what was in all those emails that got deleted? You know, we're going to talk about Hillary and her decades in public public service in politics without a single 
significant or credible accomplishment. What has she ever done? What has she ever accomplished that actually advanced our nation in any way? There's, so th there are a lot of things that we can talk about related and associated with Hillary Clinton. If that's who they want, if that's the queen they're going to coordinate, you know, coor and she's going to be the, the receiver of the coronation, she's going to get the crown, then that's a conversation we're going to be ready to have. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, we're going to continue to kind of just make that distinction uh, all, every, every chance we get. The Republican Party is debating the issues. We're bringing forth solutions to the challenges we face today. We've got this great energy growing, more and more people coming out, and more and more people waking up every morning really understanding and feeling like our nation has got, just gotten so completely off track. We are going in the wrong direction. We feel it every day. And so when we're looking for new leadership, we're looking for solutions, our neighbors, especially you know those neighbors who are not involved in politics, who don't come to these meetings every month, they're going to be looking to us for solutions, for leadership, for inspiration. And I just ask you to remember that as you start having these conversations, because you have to have these conversations a hundred times a day. But be happy warriors of the Republican message. Have the conversation with a smile on your face. The one thing I can tell you that I've learned with absolute certainty in my, my time in politics is nobody votes for anger. Nobody votes for bitterness or nastiness. They want to be inspired. They want to believe and to trust. <coughs> they, want to, they want to, you know, have a sense that there's some sort of, um, you know, competence and, and you know, qualification and, and actual plans and solutions. Let's advance things in the most positive way that we can. And the last thing that I'll close on before I take questions is just that um, I, our party, did, you know, we have debates amongst ourselves on a fairly regular basis. And unfortunately, we face challenges like we have fit, like, like you mentioned, Tony, um, as the, you know, we were transitioning into the majority in the House. And there are things that come up. It, 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 I hate using this, this analogy because it's, uh, maybe it seems overused, but it really is no different than a family. We face challenges. We have disagreements. Sometimes we have knock them down, drag them out, fights amongst ourselves. But that, in my opinion, that's okay. Let's have those conversations. Let's get it out. Let's figure it out. But we have to move forward together. If we do not make the commitment right now that no matter what conversation we have over the next 12 or 15 months, no matter what disagreements we have, no matter what issues we debate back and forth, we are going to stand together then the one thing I can promise you is that there will be a Democrat in the White House for eight more years. I am not saying get behind the party guy. I'm really committed to making sure there is no party guy, at least in New Hampshire. I held that commitment for the last two years. I'm going to hold it for the next two years. What I'm saying is have the conversation. Get it out. Express your concern. Draw it out of the candidates, all the answers that you need. But we have to go into it from the beginning already committed to standing together when the process has unfolded where we are going to end up with another President Clinton. And that is not an outcome that I'm willing to entertain. So I thank you for everything you do. You are a very engaged committee. Tony, you're doing an outstanding job out here. Oh, I Go, Tony. Okay. No. You are doing an outstanding job. You've got a great team. Hi, there. You're doing an outstanding thank job. You. Um, you know, and you're part of an outstanding committee here at Hillsborough County. So I just have to tell you, uh, I'm so pleased and I'm so impressed. The party will do anything we can to help you continue to grow and to advance. Uh, you know, Wes, you were talking about the ideas you have for the part of the county that belongs to you. Todd is with me today, Todd Chewing, our political director. I assume most of you know him by now. He will do anything he can, Wes, to help you get organized and turn people out and anything that you need, Tony. We want this committee to grow. And, I, and I'll just, I guess, finish where I started. Our party is not the small handful of people that we elect and send on our way. Our party is not those people that you see talking on TV, on Fox News at night. You are the party. It is your passion, your commitment, your dedication. It's your love for your children and your grandchildren and the country that, that you've raised them in. That's what makes our party. That's who we are. That's where our strength comes from. And as long as we remain committed to that together as a group, 
as a community. We will continue to thrive, we will continue to grow, and that is what's going to give us the best opportunity of sending a responsible Republican to the White House. But on a very, very serious note, and even though we're talking about state issues, I think this is what is very at the heart of who we are as Republicans. And I'm sure you have seen the news um, reports from today and the 124 Christian students who were slaughtered in Kenya today. 147, that the number continues to go up. Young people, students, in, a, in their school, at their university, um, Christians, targeted because they were Christians. My problem isn't that they were targeted because they were Christians. My problem is that they were targeted because of their faith, because of their religion. Whatever their faith is, it's not the faith of these heathens who are essentially trying to, uh, you know, to, you know, go across the Middle East, across the rest of the world, as far around the globe as they can go. And it, I just want to remind you that what we are doing here tonight doesn't happen everywhere in the world. And you don't have this opportunity, you don't get this chance everywhere in the world to speak your mind, to be heard, to fight for the values that you believe in, to go to church where you want to go, to fight back against the guy that represents you in government, to ask me questions, to have this debate amongst yourself. This does not happen everywhere in the world. Yeah. And there are young men and women who offer their lives in defense of what we do here every single day. Hey, so when you tell me that you're frustrated with what's happening in Concord, you're frustrated with what's happening in the party, I'm telling you, it's not a fight we can give up. You don't get to just be frustrated or angry and go home and be mad for four or five years. It's not an acceptable outcome. It's not an acceptable excuse. You have to stay in the fight until we get it right and we do the right thing because the one thing I'm not willing to do is to continue to send America's sons and daughters to die for something on our behalf that we're not even willing to fight for here at home. So I thank you for everything that you do. I look forward to continuing to fight the Republican fight with you as we go through this next cycle. And Tony, anytime you need our help in Boston, give us a call. Okay, thank you.